<laughs> that was pretty good. Bad? Good. Wow. We got one blade left, so one out of three ain't bad. Ah. Today's video is sponsored by PCB Way. If you are working on an electronics project and you need some custom printed circuit boards, that's what PCB stands for, go check out PCB Way because what you can do is you can actually design your own custom circuit board and then send that file to them and have them print it for you. And not only that, but if you know what parts you want on your circuit board, you can actually order those as well and have them build your entire circuit board assembly for you. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely go check out PCB Way. Also, they are offering rapid prototyping services. So if you love the idea of 3D printing or CNC machining or sheet metal forming or injection molding uh, with various types of materials, but you don't have the capability to do that yourself, go check out PCB Way because what you could do is actually design something, send that file to them, and then they can print it, CNC machine it, injection mold it, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's really pretty cool. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, you're working on a project, go check out PCBWay.com, link in the description down below. Let's get going with this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Here's the situation. Quadcopters use propellers to propel themselves through the air. That's super cool. Problem is, propellers are basically blenders connected to the drone, and there's like four of them. So it's really bad if, if you hit somebody or something that you don't mean to touch with the propellers because it will just slice everything up. So people put prop guards on drones. Sometimes they're in the form of ducts like you see with Cinewhoops, or they're just regular prop guards that keep the propellers from hitting things and chopping them up in case the drone bumps up to something. Now, typically these prop guards are fixed to the drone frame and they sort of surround the propellers. But I got the idea, I thought, what if the prop guards were integrated into the propellers? So I jumped on Fusion 360, designed up a simple prop guard ring. And the idea with this is that it, there's essentially a 3D printed ring with a groove on the inside. And the groove would uh, be where the propeller tips go. And that would sort of hold the prop guard in place. So I tested that out and the results were rather interesting. Now for this test, I used an old, I think it was a 2203 or 2205 motor spinning a three inch propeller four cell battery. KV on this is 2300, I think. So the motor and the propeller don't even match up. That's, you'd really use a smaller, much higher KV motor for this small size of a three inch propeller. This was good enough for this test. Okay, so it went, it flew off of that thing, landed over here, and it was like still spinning. Oh yeah, it was just, oh, it didn't break. Oh, I thought it broke. Oh, it must have, okay, okay. So it must have just like flexed outward enough to have come off, oh, wait a minute, hang on. Oh, it did break, but not, not the way I thought it would break. Oh, look at that. The way that I printed this is I printed it with only two bottom layers and, and top layers. It's hollow. And that may be the key because I printed it with uh, two wall thickness and zero infill. Okay, so this was, this was pretty good. Um, I think once again we're going to get into the situation where basically I'm going to have to beef it up until it won't fail and then 
design it down and slim it down. If I were to put this back on here, and it just kind of, you have to sort of bend things into place and it snaps in place. I mean, it was on there pretty good. I got up to about half throttle. Maybe what happened was this cut into it. That could be it. It could have cut, which caused it to like, you know, cause it to go through too far, which caused it to loosen up on the other side and then fling itself off. Wacha, that could be what happened. So after that happened, I decided to beef this thing up a little bit. So I, uh, I increased the, the groove so that the prop tips would be farther into the actual prop guard to help hold everything in place to keep it from uh, flying off due to flexing and then sort of flexing off of the propeller tips. So I beefed it up and I changed the design a little bit and let's see how that turned out. Okay, so on this one, I got up to 50% throttle, and I was I was staying at 50% just fine for like a while. Uh, I got up to right about, actually probably about 90% throttle, and then it just kind of exploded. The motor, the motor's not really hot right now. Um, cool. That's actually that did way better than I thought. Actually, like that could that could be something. Of course, it does occur to me that having a prop guard that's actually connected to the propellers or basically part of the propeller system doesn't really make any sense because even if the prop guard keeps the propeller from being necessarily like from cutting into something it will still actually affect the thrust and control of the quadcopter so yeah yeah there's not really any not really any point there so just like a lot of my it was fun though. Well, that was interesting. So we're still having some problems with that. So then I get the idea. I says to myself, hey, uh, maybe it would be better that to keep the prop guard from spinning around the propellers to keep it from just being like sort of loose. Let's put in little stops. So basically little, little barriers, uh, three little barriers since we're using tri-blade propellers. And then I thought, well, since it's kind of hard to get the propeller 
tips into the groove, like to kind of, you have to kind of bend the propeller. I said, what, well, maybe we make some cha- some cutouts in the, uh, in the groove channel so that we can just kind of like almost, it's not really screwing the propeller onto the prop guard, but we're, we're sort of doing that. We're making little grooves or making cutouts so that we can just place the propeller tips in the groove and then rotate the propeller guard uh, in the correct orientation for you know the direction that it's spinning. That way the propeller tips will butt up against the little stops that I put into the prop guard. So let's see if that helps. This is test four with the notches here. Let's try this out. Okay, I got to about 60% uh, throttle before it popped. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this this other one on here. So something like this. Just kind of slide those guys into place. Slide everything in. It is kind of loose. It does seem a little bit loose. We've got some movement. Um, this one is probably, you know, it's probably about as much. Okay. All right. This is uh, take two. So I got up to uh, about 60 or so percent throttle and I held it for a while at 50%. Take three for this test. Uh, we're using a different propeller. Okay, that one definitely wasn't working well. Barely made it up to 50% uh, throttle. You can pretty much hear issues the whole way through. Uh, ooh, a lot of damage there. Dang. Ooh, what is up with these guys? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it was just too loose, vibration issues, balance could be. Well, that didn't seem to help a whole lot either. And at this point, I kind of just gave up on this design um, because as you've I'm sure already realized it doesn't make much sense to have the prop guard connected to the propeller for many reasons now perhaps perhaps if the entire propeller and sort of prop guard were integrated into one sort of mold or 3d print perhaps that would make more sense having a separate 3D printed ring around the props is not good. And one reason is because it adds mass to the propeller tips. And that's really where you don't want the mass because that means that the, propel the, the motor has to work extra hard 
um, to spin that mass and it, it has to work extra hard to stop spinning that mass and so you lose um, the ability to speed up and slow down as, as fast as you would without that extra weight uh, on the very end of the propeller. Apparently it's really hard to get this thing, this prop guard, to keep its shape when it's spinning so fast. And part of the problem is that since it is 3D printed and since the tolerances are not super exact, it's difficult to get the weight distribution just right and to avoid vibrations. Obviously, uh, and you can see it, there were definitely certain RPM ranges where there was very little vibration and then certain ranges where there was a lot of vibration. And for the most part, uh, I don't I don't think any of these got past the 50% throttle mark. Yeah, there's just they're really not good for a high speed situation. And this was just with a three inch propeller. So if you had a longer propeller, like a five inch propeller, you're gonna have a larger diameter uh, prop guard ring, and that means that it's going to really be spinning way faster on, on the outside of that ring. So the, the prop guard, uh, I would imagine with that extra mass and that extra whatever force that's called, centrifugal, well, I guess centrifugal force basically, um, that would cause the ring to fly off even more. That's my theory anyway. So it looks like maybe this is not a genius idea and that's fine but you know sometimes you just get an idea and you gotta try it out and see for yourself how it turns out so I'm glad I did this hopefully I don't know maybe you learned something from this or it inspired you with your 3d printing stuff because 3d printing is awesome propellers are awesome drones are awesome thanks for watching everybody if you have questions or comments about this leave them down in the uh, comments section below this video thanks for watching and I will see you again very soon I mean, we get bars, we get our goggles.